131, here we are with example two, same exact directions as example one. So this time I have, again, a polynomial. This one's degree three. So when I go looking for the x-intercepts, I should find at most three of them. All right, but again, I, I'm gonna start with the y-intercept. The y-intercept is always the easier one because we'll only ever have one y-intercept and we find it by letting x equal zero. All right, if I was going to let x equal zero, this term's gonna zero out, zero out, zero out. I'm gonna be left with a negative 18. So my y-intercept is gonna be the ordered pair zero, negative 18. So there's my y-intercept, okay. Let's go see if we can find all of our x-intercepts. Now, to find an x-intercept, you would let y equal zero. And because we have function notation, that means we'll let our function zero out. So I'll get x cubed plus two x squared minus nine x minus 18 is equal to zero. All right, I need to factor out this four-termed polynomial. And it's pretty common to try something called factoring by grouping. And we did this in a previous section. And again, you should have done it in a previous math class, but maybe you don't remember it super well. So let's, let's review it. Typically when we group, you put two terms together. If you have four terms all overall, group two of them together. Now I'm gonna just opt to try the first two and the last two. You could try the outer and the inner. You could try first and third, second and fourth. You can group them however you want until you find the set that works. And it's, it's often enough that more than one combo works, but I'm lazy, I'm just gonna do, do first two, last two. So what's the GCF between these first two? Well, I can take out an x squared and I'll be left with x plus two. What's the GCF on these last two? Well, you can opt to take out a nine or a negative nine. I'm gonna take out the negative nine because I want that positive lead coefficient here. And when I factor out the negative nine, I'm gonna be left with x plus two. And for me, I just like to check that negative nine times positive two really is negative 18. I always like to check my pluses and minus signs just to make sure I'm on the right track. Well, I've taken, taken this four-termed polynomial and turned it into a binomial. Believe it or not, there's just two terms. This is one term and this is the other term. They look a little bit more complicated, but still two terms, one term, two terms, and what is their GCF? Well, it looks like x plus two. So if I factor out the x plus two from those, that, those binomial, or both terms of that binomial, I'm left with x squared minus nine. And then I see that as a difference of squares, so I start breaking this down. All right, so it looks like I'm getting three x values but keep in mind, anytime you wanna give me x-intercepts, and you will be listing a whole bunch of traits as we move through these chapters, I need an x, oops, not zero, negative two, sorry, I need an x and a y-coordinate. So I have a zero at negative two, zero, I have one at three, zero, and I have one at negative three, zero. And it's never a bad idea to go ahead and check against your calculator. So let me go ahead and clear this out and put in my polynomial, x cubed plus two x squared minus nine x minus 18. I'm gonna hit zoom six, especially because I remember an example one, I zoomed in, so my window's a little messed up. Um, before I hit zoom six, I just want you to see my window, right? I had zoomed in at the origin in example one, so let me reset, zoom six and I should see three x-intercepts, and I do. I see one at negative three, negative two, and three. I can't quite see this y-intercept at negative 18, because if you look at the y-minimum, it only goes down to negative 10. That's the zoom six default window. If I actually wanted to see this, I could just lower this to any number smaller than negative 18. I'm gonna opt for negative 20, and keep in mind whenever you adjust your window, don't hit zoom six again, it'll just reset this back to negative 10. Hit graph. And when I hit graph, then I have a more complete look. Oh, I still can't, well, I can see my y-intercept. That's down here at negative 18. I actually can't see the minimum yet. It looks like I need to go a little bit lower. I like to be a completist, so I'm gonna do it. Let's try negative 30. 
and I'm gonna actually make a tick mark every five units. So that's what the Y scale represents. Let me hit graph. Can I see it yet? Wait for it. Ah, oh, fantastic. Right, so there's my zero at negative two. Um, excuse me, negative three, negative two, and three. There's my y-intercept at zero, negative 18. I have some kind of maximum point here that I could go locate, and I also have a minimum point over here that I could go locate with my calculator. Don't forget that second and trace button. It gives you all sorts of information about your function, and we'll be using that as we move forward and we start trying to graph out all of these polynomials. All right, so with that, we're gonna head over to example three, and we're gonna do this again. We're gonna try to find some zeros of a more complicated polynomial. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.